So let me begin by what exactly we are trying to do here. So customer lifetime value, basically it is like uh, how much income can we expect from the customers through the through some particular timeline. So for this time, we'll be working with quarters and the end result would uh, come out to be something like this. So what we are trying to do here is uh, quarter, uh, so trying to analyze through quarters, we are trying to understand what is the a total number of like what is the running total for that quarter and what has the increment been in that particular quarter so that is basically what we are trying to do here the data set is the uh, sample store data itself nothing so it's it's the power, power bi sample data itself um yeah so uh, uh there are a couple of measures you can see that i have created with the numbers in the front and what i'm trying to do here is uh whatever confusion I had when I uh, first went through this exercise. So I'll be explaining that as well. Uh, in the beginning, what I want, so the first uh, column, calculated column that I create is the first order date. Very simple one. So what I want to do here is uh, for each individual or customer ID, I want to see what is the uh, minimum order date. So in it itself, there is a like this all except function is sort of used, which uh, initially I was confused exactly what it does. So there's an alternate way to do this, which uh, so all except what basically it does is it uh, creates a sort of group for different customer uh, IDs. So say, suppose we are talking about one particular customer ID and in for that customer ID itself, what is the minimum order date? So there's an alternate way to do this that I was more familiar with. So this is, uh, I try to uh, decide a var variable and give it a customer ID. So giving it a variable sort of does the same stuff as all except us. And I got, uh, what is the minimum, like what is the first order date for each customer so uh uh yeah so if i take this out this will be something like this uh yeah so it will be something like this this is for different cu cu customers the second function we tried was maximum uh quarters as a customer so what i want to do here is i want to divide the entire order date column i have uh this column i i want to divide it entirely on the basis of quarters so there's ob obviously a quick function called quarter number but the issue with that is uh, quarter numbers are generally for each year. So as the year changes, it gets uh, it starts again with quarter number one, which I don't want. What I want is for whatever timeline, for whatever column I have from, we have, I think from 2018 to 2021. So up until then, I want to calculate the total number of quarters. So which is why uh, the thing to do here is to calculate a date difference between first order date that I calculated first and the maximum of the order state. And the difference has to be through quarters. Issue with this is uh, if the first order date and the same, like they both fall in the same quarter, the difference would be zero. So for that, I just put plus one. So this was a simple uh, solution to that. Thirdly, I'm trying to calculate quarters since first purchase. So uh, there is a, very important difference in here that let me uh, show with customer ID. So say, suppose uh, I'm trying to cal understand by customers. So customer ID, max quarters, and third one, which is quarters since first purchase. So how this basically works is for each of these uh, customers, yeah, so uh, for each of these customers, say suppose I'm talking about 10315. So for this particular customer ID, maximum quarters as customer. So for the very first time they made a purchase till the present quarter, how many quarters has it been? So this will be so this will be single for each customer ID. But quarters since first purchase basically means that ever since this particular customer made the first purchase, at what exact quarters have they been purchasing? So this particular customer ID, this purchased at first quarter, third quarter, eighth, ninth, and 14th quarter. And this just basically gives us the, um, the uh, a time, like the number of quarters that has been since their first per per purchase. So this per particular customer, this has been purchasing since the, since the very first quarter. The total quarters we have is 16. So 
this is the difference in how it will be used is I'll be explaining that in the further calculations. Uh, next, we have customer by quarter. This is sort of an important one. So what I'm trying to calculate here is I want to understand the uh, number of customers I have in each quarter. So uh, to further explain this, yeah. So basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to calculate the customers by a quarter. So uh, if say, suppose we are talking about uh, so this quarter since first purchase, as I mentioned in initially quarter since first pur purchases, uh, what what is the like uh, the, this max quarters as customer basically gives a single value for each customer ID. But for each customer ID, this quarter since first pur purchase would be different because it will give us the exact quarter at which a customer purchased a product. So what is the number of customers we have in different quarters? If say, suppose we are talking about quarter number 16. So how many customers ordered on quarter 16 who have been ordering since the first quarter? What the, that basically starts from whatever their first pu purchased end date is. So obviously, uh, if if we're talking about say particular e e-commerce uh, e or something like, like, like that. So say, suppose a particular app. So if a customer logins in an app for the very first time, then the, the number of customers that purchase in that particular quarter would be more. And the, and, and the retaining customers of, uh, becomes less through the time. So the, this retention is what is that that is important. So this customer by quarter sort of gives me the uh, number of customers that have retained through the qu quarters. This is the fourth one. The fifth one we have here is, is this a simple average qu quarterly value, although there is sort of an issue here, which I'll explain. So average qu qu quarterly value, I'm basically trying to divide the sum by the customers by quarter. Uh, now there is a sort of uncertainty here because there are, so I try to calculate this with two functions. So this is simple sum. And with this, I'm using sum X. The problem with this is uh, in the, average quarterly value where I'm only using sum, there is the total difference, the, the total comes out to be this, whereas it's different in the uh, sum x function that I'm using. This essentially happens because um, DAX sort of does not calculate the total amount properly through the rows when it comes to only sum function. So sum x is sort of an in inherently uh, calculated value through the rows, so through the dif different rows. I'm, I, I'm not exactly sure how they calculate these the differences, but it's sort of, so sum X sort of works that, like that, which is why it's, uh, so yeah, so the, which is why the sixth uh, function, like this sixth measure that I've created, which gives me the correct sum, is something that I'll be using further. Uh, if I take you through the, function. So how it can calculate is sort of try to calculate the sum of the values of the this uh yeah by the quarter since first row. So it's trying to calculate the sum based on this particular column. And the measure it's using is again the fifth one only with the basic sum value. So it's not necessarily false, but the total value we are getting is wrong. Which is why uh the sixth one that I've created is sort of the final one. After that it's basically uh running quarterly value uh, this is a simple one so i'm trying to calculate how to create how to calculate like the sum to the next uh, rows which is uh, uh, basically cal calculating the sum whenever so the quarter since for first purchase this is less than whatever the particular one is so if you're talking about this row if this is less than the other ones so the rest of the ones so it sort of cal calculates the sum based on that so if you're talking about second row this will calculate the sum of the value in this one plus uh, when the value is less than this. So this plus this, and it sort of calculates the running quarterly value. Now, um, I actually also want to calculate, so this the second bar that I'm showing, this uh, dark blue bar, this is sort of an increment in that particular quarter, which I also want to show. So this I calculate through the last one, which is running qu quarterly value. So all it does is it sort of uh, sort of uh, 
it's a difference between the two values. So uh, I think, yeah, so let me add it in this instead. Yeah, so if I add this running one, calculate the seventh one as well. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so you can see that we have the value in here. So I want to uh, different. I want a difference between this and this. So it will sort of give me the uh, exact increment that happened through. Uh, yeah, so in in that particular quarter. So once this all is done, all I wanted is a graph with quarter since first purchase. So I want the number of customers based on this. Uh, the tax I created for quarter since first purchase. So based on that, I try to have this bar, which is average quarterly value. This is the total one. And then we have, uh, sorry, this is the running quarterly value. And this is the average quarterly value for that particular quarter. So yeah, this is it. Obviously there's, there's a lot of for, for formatting can be done in terms of data labels and stuff, but yeah, uh, this, exercise was majorly focused on DAX and I wanted to show this for that reason only.